ஹரிஷ்டிஷன்ஸ்ட்ரிஸ்ட்ரி Uh, we have that uh, our traditions and some extent the various laws of there uh, the ramesh research and development division time to time we are presenting the lectures the works towards this uh, our objectives that is reinventing and uh, establishing ancient technology in new form and it's suitable for the 21st century so today the uh, we have this special guest lecture he is the uh, Mr Shiva he is from Germany actually he is origin from India and established in Germany more than 20 years and his full name is Mr Shiva Raghuram Prasad Chinnapitti and he worked at the Texas Instruments for the 13 years and 6 years at the Infineon right now he is the founder of the uh, and the CEO of Sunflower Propeller GM Uh, BH German the invent of sunflower propeller from his childhood uh, idea he born to that inventor and multiple patents is having and uh, a system level think and the complex problem solver so i got to know this uh, gentleman from recently and we are working towards uh, together towards the one object to equal in process of the german sarsva in sarsva which is written in sanskrit and uh, mr shiva is uh, the the one of scientists of that uh, vimana global scientists uh, 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 forum so this is over to you mr shiva thank you so oh, thank you very much harsha ji uh, hello everyone uh, uh, it was a great introduction um shiva chena party actually um so so what you see on my background actually is is the propeller uh, which we made uh, uh, in 2019 um and it's a, it's a wheel propeller technology and the one uh, today the presentation which i'm going to talk about uh uh is uh, chakras uh, and uh, energy harvesting so usually i start with my presentation with this shloka actually puja shiva vishvantam bhaskaram bhuvneshwar uh worship the sun the source of all and the owner of this universe um and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, chakra and the uh, energy harvesting uh, you know everything uh, in uh, universe is uh, round and it's rotating even stars and uh, every planet is rotating and they have a lot of energy uh, and um, and uh, so it's uh, it's all wheel based uh, uh, so the energy which is uh, moving uh, is Uh, is a wave energy and uh, the energy uh, uh, which is rotating in a in a spiral or cylindrical form or in a vertex is called matter actually so everything is energy so which is moving in a in a, in a, a moving energy is uh, moves in a wave format could be electromagnetic or any other kind of forms of energy which is moving in the form of waves so, but if it's uh, moving in a in a vortex or in a cylindrical form or in within um, within uh, within a uh, within a circular uh, sphere then we call this uh, matter or atom so today we're going to talk about uh, the chakras and the energy harvesting so before we uh, go into that uh, so i would like to start with uh, the the 1974 iic bangalore paper uh, on vimana shastra actually so many people have uh, read this access to actually uh, and uh, these guys in 74 without doing a very deep study they concluded that uh, uh, the vimana shastra is kind of a, uh, a pseudo science uh, and they said that it's based on the present knowledge uh, 
they say it's not feasible. I mean, it sounds really, sounds like, uh, okay, today's technology cannot do it, but doesn't mean that any latest technology, they didn't talk about any other possibility. Yeah. So on this basis, actually, um, is uh, the main two issues which uh, they discussed in this uh, uh, paper are propulsion issues. Uh, uh, and the second one is uh, the structural issue. So the propulsion issue, actually, I do agree with that. Uh, it's not possible using a screw propeller. It's not possible to fly some of the Vimanas uh, uh, in, in this uh, uh, Vimana Shasta. But using uh, a wheel propeller technology, it is possible. Uh, this is uh, in my invention. After uh, invention, I found out that uh, uh, this using this invention, it's possible to make uh, this Rukumana and Shekno Vimana. Uh, which I'll talk uh, in a few minutes. Uh, but the main topic today is uh, is about the structural issues uh, and why uh, uh, these uh, there are large towers uh, on uh, the vimanas, and for a good reason. Even the the temple towers are also called vimanas. Uh, uh, there is a connection, a very good connection between these two. And uh, as you see on the left side, the propulsion issue is kind of beside and it's partially uh, proved uh, that this uh, paper from 74 is uh, is incorrect and uh, there is uh, still some part of the uh, of this paper which is still not uh, uh, solved or uh, not yet deciphered and this is where i'm making a hypothesis it's not any conclusion i'm not making any conclusion here to make a hypothesis saying that probably these uh, large towers or uh, temple like structures or more might be used for energy harvesting so before we go deep into that, I would quickly cover uh, the propulsion uh, and the invention of sunflower propeller. Uh, after that, we'll go to the structural issues. Oh, you enlarge me. So coming to a uh, wheel and uh, a screw, actually many people don't know that uh, the difference between a wheel and a screw, I'll quickly go to that. So if we, if we take a screw, this screw is the Leonardo da Vinci invention from 14th century. If you rotate a screw, the, the, for one, if you make a one rotation, the amount of distance it travels, is one page. So if we take a uh, screw and a screw and a screwdriver, uh, the amount of distance it goes into the piece of wood is uh, one page. Uh, everyone knows that. Using this screw, you can make uh, a, a, a tanker actually. So you can uh, Google it. Uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, YouTube videos. A screw propelled vehicle. Uh, this is a Russian tanker. It cuts uh, forward. Uh, uh, it goes very slow, but still it works. So using a screw, we can also make uh, 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 propeller for. Uh, Aeroplanes and using a screw can also make uh, uh, propeller for uh, for board ships and submarines. Um, and if you take a wheel, uh, say for example, here we are taking the same size wheel, um, uh, and uh, here the radius of this uh, wheel is about two times uh, the pitch of the uh, screw propeller. So if you rotate a wheel, the amount of distance it travels is two pi r. Say so assuming pi is three and two times uh, uh, three is six. And here the radius is two units, so it goes forward by 12 units. So uh, a screw will only go forward by one pitch, whereas the same di same diameter wheel will go forward by 10 to 15 times uh, uh, longer, actually. So in, in order to cover the same distance, the screw has to rotate 10 to 15 times faster. Now, the point is, uh, we know we have a uh, uh, wheel for land, uh, but the issue is we don't have wheel for uh, air and water. And this is where this sunflower propeller is coming in. So if you take an, uh, the actual uh, screw uh, or a table fan, uh, so the, the thrust, uh, the airflow is only flowing in the direction of axis and uh, in the opposite direction get the thrust. And uh, it's only in one direction and axial, uh, in that direction of axis. So if you want to change the direction of uh, thrust, uh, you have to change the, you have to rotate the whole uh, hub uh, along with the propeller actually. This is an issue actually. But uh, whereas a wheel, um, uh, if you contact it at a lower point, uh, if you contact it lower point and uh, you rotate it uh, clockwise uh, direction, it goes to the right. If you rotate it clockwise, it goes to the right. And if you uh, uh, contact it on the top and rotate it clockwise, it goes to the left. And if you put, uh, contact it on, on the left side, it rotate it clockwise, it goes down. If you, rotate, uh, if you touch it on the, on, the, on, the, on the right side and rotate it clockwise, it goes up. So depending on your contact point, uh, the wheel can rotate, it, the wheel can generate 360 degree direction of thrust. So for example, here I show it's uh, rotating clockwise and uh, uh, the friction point of the contact is at the bottom, and you go right. And if you change uh, the friction point to the top and if you rotate it uh, clockwise, 
now this wheel will go left. So depending on the contact point on the friction point, we can change the direction of the thrust uh, in 360 degrees in, in this is a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So a wheel is axial thrust. Sorry, uh, screw is axial thrust, uh, whereas the wheel is a uh, radial thrust. And this is the most important thing. So using this uh, propeller, which is, uh, or you see on the left side, actually, it's, uh, here the blades are, uh, here it's horizontal. Uh, and by the time you know, it rotates, it comes here at 45. And by the time it comes here, it's 90 degrees. And by the time it goes there, it's uh, 135 and comes here down again at uh, uh, 180 degrees. So if you see this uh, propeller from this axis and uh, the hub uh, is the sun and the blades uh, of the, the rays of the sun. Uh, so this is how the, the, the propeller uh, operates. And uh, that's the logo of our uh, uh, company also, Sunflower uh, Propeller. And here you have the, sun, uh, the hub in the center and the blades are rotating and revolving. So this can be used for both power generation and thrust generation. Uh, so yeah, so so we can make this using this propeller. We can make this uh, uh, Rukumana make it fly. Screw is not possible. I agree, I agree that it does not uh, make any sense. Uh, the screw, the screw propeller, the thrust uh, generated by the screw propeller will hit its own fuselage, and uh, it will not be able to generate a uh, meaningful uh, vertical uh, takeoff thrust. So we also found out uh, the shloka actually. Um, and the Varna Shastra uh, is a proof uh, that ancient, ancient uh, technologies have used uh, uh, wheel technology. And this shloka is uh, 84 from the Varna Shastra, page 300. So uh, for direction, for example, this, this shloka, the, the translation is for direction change, circular rotation, direction is, is controlled by the blades. So by changing the angle of the blades, you can change the direction of the thrust. So half moon shaped devices are fixed in four directions. So this, this propeller uh, hub is uh, in the shape of a half moon, and uh, that's uh, how this uh, propeller hub looks like. And uh, so we can make uh, this uh, 360 degree directional uh, radial thrust, and we can generate easily the thrust vertically and after going up in the air. So we can go vert uh, horizontally and go left or right in any any direction. You go up and down just by changing the angle of the blade. You can generate the direction of thrust. So this is uh, already done, and um, so we found out also one more shloka actually uh, with the help of uh, Dr. Siyasa Prabhuji. Actually, he's a well-known uh, uh, Yamana uh, uh, expert uh, in, uh, in India, and he decoded many shlokas, uh, and he made many about six uh, um, alloys uh, by decoding uh, shlokas from Yamana Shastra. And he also made a gearbox uh, which has about uh, 16 gear uh, steps. Uh, so, so he, with the help of uh, uh, Dr. Siyasar uh, Prabhuji, he found out the shloka page uh, 300 and uh, shloka number 92. And we found out the uh, references of Kila Shanku. And uh, the Kila Shanku is the Kila, Kila means uh, meaning uh, an elbow or a joint. Um, and uh, uh, Shanku uh, means a cone or a triangle. So the, the shloka translation means the wheels inside the pipe rotate and the Kila Shankus as well rotate and revolve in sequence. Actually, this is exactly a, how uh, the sunflower propeller cycloid uh, propeller works. Um, the point is, uh, using this shloka, it's not possible to make the propeller because uh, internal operation is not given. Uh, this was already found before, and afterwards we found out this shloka, which only explains the external operation, and uh, no one knows how this works internally, and this is still a, a secret, uh, how this is uh, done internally. But uh, the slokas only uh, explain uh, the external uh, operation of the propeller. So this is the, the propeller uh, or a wheel propeller where which can be used uh, uh, for both power and generation. So, so far we have shown this uh, propeller uh, at World Energy Council Abu Dhabi in 2019. This is the first propeller which you see on my background here also. This is the same one. Uh, and we showed this uh, uh, first 3D printed prototype and we showed this uh, recently in uh, uh, Lyon, France at uh, Energy Mix. And we showed this uh, last month uh, in India actually, uh, actually at the end of June at the SV University, um, SV Vedic University in Tirupati. And uh, we also shown this uh, at uh, uh, IIT Bombay Delta. Uh, uh, so. 
so so far this is the work uh, which is uh, going on and uh, yeah as i said uh, it's a, using a wheel propulsion it's possible to make uh, rukumana uh, fly because we get uh, 360 degree dash from thrust so now um, that part is done and now partially we can say it's partially proved but still there is this structural issue which is still bothering me and so i was uh, looking at this why they made such such large towers uh, and this is uh, making an hypothesis uh, probably these uh, towers were done uh, to uh, to harvest energy from from the ionosphere or the solar energy whatever you call it and this is the the hypothesis uh, which may or may not be true uh, but there are some hints and uh, um, uh, connecting dots which says that most probably this might be the thing but we need to do more work to to prove this so going to that, before going into this, we need to explain a little bit of physics. So we need to understand uh, uh, some basic physics. Uh, so for that one, we need to know what is a homopolar motor. Actually, many people don't know what a homopolar motor is. And uh, this is not taught in any school or not taught in any university because this is uh, kind of uh, violates some laws of physics or uh, it's very hard to explain uh, this phenomenon using standard physics, uh, so that's why they don't they don't uh, allow or they don't talk about this. Uh, but there's a lot of information on the internet uh, uh, about a homopolar motor and homopolar generator actually. So homopolar motor is uh, you probably guys know uh, homopolar motor standard motors have a rotor and a, a stator, and uh, usually there are multiple poles uh, and um, the the field is being changed or switched uh, using uh, commutators or some AC uh, uh, phases, uh, multiple phases, so you can do it or changing uh, uh, frequencies uh, or by switching uh, uh, using uh, uh, for BLDC motors, they, they generate the pulses. Uh, there are multiple ways, but in this one, there's no switching. There's uh, only one magnet, one pole, and there's no change in magnetic field, it's constant, but still you can make it rotate. Uh, uh, so this is, uh, um, uh, I'll just uh, give, give a quick uh, look on that one. Uh, so, so this one actually, you see, uh, you can see it, uh, this is a is a magnet. Uh, it's a ring magnet. I can also use, uh, found it in uh, um, speakers. Uh, so the, there is a minus black is connected minus to the center and the uh, and the the top bezel uh, uh, is connected to to another terminal which is a positive and uh, so they put a uh, uh, mercury in there uh, and if you put uh, electric current in there so so the magnetic field is constant it's not switching and here is the dc current is with in kept so this starts rotating actually so so the point is if you rotate this liquid this will also generate uh, electricity so it's, it's a two-way thing uh, so there is another version of this uh, you can uh, so you have one one conductor uh, inside, another conductor outside here, and uh, otherwise we can putting a video on that one. So don't want to talk about. It. And this is the homopolar motor. All you have is 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 a, is a battery uh, and a magnet, and this is easy to make it. You just connect it, and this one uh, rotates. So it's a very simple motor. It's just one one pole and a DC current, and this one rotates. It's very easy to make it. And uh, so, yeah, so this is a motor and uh, there's a lot of YouTube videos. You can watch this uh, on, on YouTube. And uh, the same thing is uh, is a similar principle is if you take um, a conductor and you rotate it in a magnetic field, you can rotate along with the magnet also. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, and this generates power. Uh, this is, there is a lot of information. Just, just uh, go and Google it. and. Uh, You'll find a lot of information on this. And there is a guy called Bruce uh, D. Palma. Um, this guy made a lot of uh, work on this. Uh, in 1978, he made a, um, a pretty big, a pretty successful uh, DC generator whose output is about 300% three, more than the input power. And afterwards, uh, this Indian guy, uh, uh, Tiwari, Paramahamsa Tiwari, he made the AC version of uh, the this. Uh, uh, homopolar generator. He was also very successful in generating more power than uh, uh, 
uh, than the input. Actually, there's a lot of uh, information. I'll just quickly uh, share that information. So there's a page. Uh, it's uh, BruceDPalma.com. There we have this a uh, lot of information about him, and there's also information uh, about the Tiwari theory and uh, uh, the AC version of this. Uh, there's a lot of information. Please go through that uh, because this will be off the topic. Um, uh, don't want to get into that uh, uh, complex uh, stuff. So basically, um, it's uh, it, this one here. Actually, you see on the right side, uh, it follows the Fleming's uh, left-hand rule. Uh, it's using uh, electronic current. Uh, the uh, the electrons are fall, uh, flowing from minus to plus. Uh, so if you're using a conventional current where the current is flowing from plus to minus, then you have to use Fleming's right-hand rule. But here in this uh, image, uh, it's we uh, have to follow Fleming's left-hand rule. So so that that's so that's the motor and. Uh, and this is, is the paradox uh, because uh, it looks like as if uh, because the magnet, the current is flowing through the magnet, a DC current, um, no alternating current, and this magnet rotates, and it looks like it's pushing itself because the current is flowing through the magnet, and it rotates. That means it looks like it's pushing itself and it's rotating. And now the question is, what it is pushing against? Is, is is the problem. So the rotor and the stator are one and the same, and uh, and that is the paradox uh, which is uh, not clearly understood uh, by the modern science, and this is the reason why it's not told uh, in uh, in any university or in any schools. So now the point is, uh, this phenomenon exists. You can use the the homopolar uh, motor, or you can uh, rotate it and generate the, the magnet. And you can generate electricity from that. This this phenomenon is known and works. Uh, it's, it's proven technology. So it's nothing new. Now the point is, everyone knows that the Earth is a, is a magnet and it's rotating. And uh, and the probability that this Earth is also a homopolar generator is very high. And I'm the world's first one to make this statement. And most probably the Earth is a homopolar generator. Now the question is. But where are the plus and minus terminals? This is a problem. So, so, and everyone knows this is not a rocket science. This is also a proven thing. We have ionosphere, and uh, because of sun rays, uh, we have multiple layers of uh, ionosphere forming during the daytime. But during the nighttime, it forms just one F layer, F region, actually. Uh, and everyone knows this is a highly conductive uh, ionized gases or ionized layer. So. It is a conducting layer, actually. So it's a conductor, and the Earth is the ground, actually. So if you take uh, the Earth and you have a magnet, uh, the North Pole is the the, the magnetic uh, South, and the South Pole is the magnetic North. So so the the the, uh, the magnetic lines of force are going from bottom to the top, and the Earth is rotating from west to east. So this is the uh, uh, the purple arrow is the the rotation of the Earth. The blue arrow is the, is the magnetic field, and the direction of four of the electric current is from minus to plus, and this will charge, as per the homopolar motor, this will charge the ionosphere. And this is not rocket science; this is simple physics, and this phenomenon is already happening. And everyone knows that actually, so there's nothing wrong. And, and the ionosphere acts as the, as the world's biggest capacitor, and on not only on top of that, it's acting as a capacitor between uh, the ionosphere and the ground. Which is charged to 400,000 volts. On top of that, uh, you can call the the ionosphere as the world's biggest solar panel, uh, which is uh, receiving not only solar energy and also cosmic energy, um, and that's why it's getting ionized and they have a huge uh, connecting plate all around the Earth. And um, we all know that uh, uh, there is a lot of energy coming from from the sky because the moving clouds get charged uh, when they are. Uh, uh, moving between this uh, ground and uh, 400,000 volt dinosphere. And we get a lot of uh, energy for every second. We get like 40 to 50 uh, lightning uh, on the entire Earth. Uh, altogether, this, uh, the amount of uh, lightning uh, we get is uh, close to 1.5 billion flashes per year. This is not all the energy, but this is only the partial energy which is being charged, which is which charges the clouds because they are. Uh, moving between ionosphere and the ground, actually, and this lightning discharge uh, 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 
is also very helpful for uh, plants and uh, um, trees uh, for healthy growth because this this lightning does uh, nitrogen fixation uh, so ammonia uh, we get a lot of ammonia in this rainwater because of this electric current going through these uh, black clouds so this is also nothing new and everyone knows this uh, uh, now the point is we have a lot of energy coming from the sun and uh, earth is the home of polar uh, generator and uh, we we know that ionosphere is charged to very high voltages. And now the question is, is it possible to harvest this abundant energy? Is this a question? And um, it looks like it's, uh, some people have already tried it. Uh, and there is uh, this uh, circuit from Tesla where it's, uh, it's uh, saying that it, it's possible to, do, to harvest this energy from the ionosphere. So we have this ionosphere uh, at 400,000 volts. And um, the, that that one, the, 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 the top peak point is the ionosphere, and, and the, so he was proposing a circuit. You put an inductor, and you oscillate that, and you have an LC oscillation, and this can be used as a step down transformer to get the uh, lower er energy, uh, and you can use that as an uh, electrical output, uh, uh, and you can harvest this uh, energy from ionosphere. It looks like it, it tried to do it, um, but we don't know, but we have to try, try to do this again and replicate it. And now the question is uh, probably, so this was uh, already done uh, because, uh, and uh, and some people say that uh, uh, he got this information from uh, Vivekananda helping, uh, because there was a meeting between uh, Vivekananda, Swami Vivekananda and uh, Tesla during those days. Uh, and probably you never know it's it's, uh, it's not documented so the point is uh, when you see this uh, the this the cosmic energy of uh, the ionosphere a lot of energy which can let's call this the seventh chakra or the sahasra uh, when we, in vedic text it's called as the seventh chakra and we have the mula uh, which is the first chakra which also very much uh, common and used uh, broadly in uh, uh, chakra meditation and uh, we have only these two points. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, again, this, this is the thing probably uh, this is already known and used uh, because there's a lot of uh, information which is pointing in that direction um, where you can harvest this uh, higher voltage. Uh, probably this, uh, this was already done using pyramids uh, and uh, probably Tesla has already done this in the past. So there's a lot of earth electric force which looks like uh, can be harvested. So now the point is uh, even the, there is uh, so some people say that uh, energy temples are energy uh, centers, and um, what that energy is is still not clear. Probably some people say it's just some kind of spiritual energy. Technically, it might be possible that these temples were built, uh, not not the ones which are existing today, probably more than 10,000 years ago, probably they were made to harvest this uh, electrical energy from the hemisphere. And probably this, even the, the pyramid, uh, which has a metallic uh, tip on the top, uh, was also used to harvest this electrical energy from the solar uh, hemisphere energy. So we have, if you see, try to look at uh, what all is existing. What we only have is the the, the color shim or the, the metallic tip on the top of a pyramid uh, or on the top of a, a, a temple and uh, and uh, the mula. And uh, most of the temples, uh, uh, they still, even today, when they were installing uh, uh, the the mula, uh, the, if you look into the Agama Shastra, uh, for temple uh, construction, even today the the earthing of the temples is done like electrical grounding. That's pretty astonishing, but this is the way these guys do it even today. So it looks like um, the remaining parts are lost. Uh, we only have the 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 kalasha, which is pointing to the sky for uh, connecting to the ionosphere, um, and there we have a capacitor uh, uh, with that metallic. Structure, you can uh, do an LC oscillation and you can do a step down conversion, and it's technically possible to use that step down conversion to, to use that electrical energy. 
which is not yet tested uh, what someone has to start doing this uh, this is very high voltage uh, electrical engineering so now the point is but we couldn't find any references of this uh, uh, coil so we have 10 minutes uh, uh, let's let's try to finish this um so it's lost uh, we only have a uh, kalasham and uh, the connect to the connection to the ground uh, which is called the mula um and but still assuming that these things are uh, not possible so we can uh, still uh, use these uh, metallic things and it's also known that uh, these metallic uh, uh, spikes will help in um, in growing crops uh, uh, in and around the temple so there was one nice video uh, it was done by ravana aviation uh, it's electroculture by dr janik uh, probably you can look it afterwards so this uh, this sharp metallic uh, objects that would help in uh, increasing the the crop yield by around 50 percent or so so they are doing already the job but now the question is if you can um, uh, harvest that energy so i came across this at the beginning of this year uh, this is an image uh, from a uh, uh, church uh, cathedral in france so this is not built by uh, the french people but they have used the the foundations of an earlier building construction so they also really don't know what exactly is this uh, some say it's a labyrinth, uh, but it doesn't look like labyrinth. They put it in the middle of this, uh, this uh, church. And in the center, there is a, a copper uh, plate, uh, and it has some rivets, uh, metallic rivets connected to it. It looks like a coil, a heating coil, or an inductor. And probably this might be a coil for also an LC oscillator. We don't know, actually. So, And this is the only reference which I could find out uh, about an inductor. And uh, I was looking for a potential uh, capacitor uh, in any of these old structures, uh, in any of these uh, buildings. Uh, so I, I, I met uh, uh, Harshaji, and uh, he pointed me to uh, to this uh, stupa in uh, Sri Lanka. And this is a very strange one. Uh, there is a huge metallic uh, bronze uh, and uh, silver plates uh, below this stupa, and the whole area of this stupa. About correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, Harshaji, it's about the radius of uh, or diameter of around 200, 300 meters, right? Yeah. So, so it looks like a capacitor as well. Uh, so, for some reason, they built this. Uh, probably they are using this for harvesting uh, energy from the ionosphere or for transmitting energy uh, to wireless power transmission. Uh, probably this was used. I know notes. And they have a seven inch. Uh, Thick silver layer below this tupa. Uh, you can watch that uh, video. And uh, eight inch thick copper plate, and uh, and uh, the lower metal layer is iron layer. Why they did it? And they put insulate these layers. And this is the one which needs to be ex explored and found out probably they're using this as a plastic. And there's, there's a huge uh, uh, chance that they are using this for energy. And one more thing which I would like to point out or this picture is a is a real picture of uh, the the giza tower uh, uh, as uh, uh, done by alex uh, and for the picture what you see on the left is the zoom of that top part of this uh, where you can see that there are some metal wires coming to the top uh, it looks like they're using this uh, there is there are some electrical connections already uh, to the tip of the tower and probably they are using this uh, also for energy harvesting, uh, which uh, which needs to be investigated and uh, probably uh, tested. And uh, uh, there is a chance to to get the energy out from minus field. So there's a last slide. No matter what, uh, one thing is for sure: you need a solid, good ground connection uh, to the core rock, and uh, for a good uh, uh, connection to the Sahasra, you need a sharp, uh, uh, you need a connection open, open uh field to the sky and this is the river current on the rock and probably this is one of the reason why uh the people who got enlightened uh, are uh, either go to himalayas or go to some kind of uh, rocks where you have a solid connection to the ground and an open sky uh, so that you can easily connect uh, and download uh, uh, the data from 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 the cosmos yeah yeah let's hope uh, because we we really don't know uh, what we don't know and we really don't know how much we don't know uh, probably uh, more work needs to be done so that we can uh, find out uh, uh, 
more ways to harvest this uh, solar or cosmic energy. And uh, we also need to look into to, to Vedic uh, uh, texts. Uh, but the problem in Vedic texts is, is highly encrypted uh, knowledge where it makes uh, people to get even more confused uh, because the slokas are, are not meant to be decoded by common man. It's a kind of uh, uh, safety algorithms they use to, to encrypt. Uh, so, so we need to find uh, and we need to work together to, to explore and to get this uh, technology out uh, to the night. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Harshadji. Thank you.